Hey guys, I wanted to give you guys a little update. Sorry. A little update on what's been going on at the farm. So, if you guys have been following our page for a while, that you know that we had a gilt flare. She's our Hereford Duroc girl um, that was due to have her babies. And she did have her babies. And I'm happy to report that all nine of them are doing really well. Lots of milk. Everybody's doing great. Flares up and moving around. Happy, healthy, eating, drinking, all that good stuff. <laughs> However, it was quite the farrowing experience and I want to share with you guys all that happened with that because it was quite the thing. It was definitely one of the worst farrowing or actually the worst farrowing experience I have had this far with our pigs. Um, yeah, it was quite the ordeal. It was really scary. It was really nerve wracking. I wasn't sure how it was going to go either good or bad. And so I am glad that it did go well. But let's go into what exactly all happened there. Okay, so first off, Flair had been showing signs of labor for about three days before she actually had her babies. There was points where she would actually come out of the barn and stand there and look like she was having a contraction. So that was really weird. I've never had a pig do that before, but, um, Anyway, April 21st came around, her actual due date, after she had kept me up for three nights prior checking on her. She finally started to go into labor that afternoon. And um, things were not progressing like they should. So she probably started going into labor, like actually laying down, heavy breathing, pushing at around 3.30, 4 o'clock, something like that. And I kept checking on her every couple of hours. I try not to get in their space too much. Um, I just want to make sure that things are progressing. And, you know, I left her a while because she's a guilt. She's never had babies. It's her first time, obviously. And I know that things can take a little bit longer, especially because she's so young and never had babies before. She's not one of our mature sows that's done it a bunch of times and her body doesn't really know what to do. It's just kind of like humans. But anyway, yeah, so I put my daughter to bed around 8 o'clock and I came back out and checked on her and like nothing had changed except for the fact that she looked like she was struggling even more than she had been before, breathing harder really pushing, really moving and struggling. Like she just looked really uncomfortable. So at that point I was like, yep, this is taking too long. Something's not right. I need to do something about this. At least check and see what's going on. So I felt terrible. I said an apology to her because she's never had babies before. And I had to stick my hand up her and she's, yeah, just never had that sensation, that stretching. And so, yeah. But anyways, cleaned her all up, disinfected her, put my hand in there, got the lube on, all that good stuff, and checked and see what's going on. And I could feel that there was a piglet in the birth canal, but it was coming head first, and it was definitely trapped in the pelvis. There was no way that piglet was coming out. It was just way too tight of a space for her to push that out on her own. So, um, I had to pull the first one, and it was a huge, huge struggle to get that one out, trying to fit your hand in an already narrow opening while holding onto a piglet's head and pulling it out with your 
your hand like this, making it even harder to pull out, that is tough. So I did finally get it out after um, a lot of fooling around in there, I guess. Um, I was out of breath by that first one for sure. I had to take a minute <laughs> to get my bearings back after that one. Uh, oh, I just had to pull a big button. Oh, that was the hardest pull. Oh, man. I thought I was gonna have to pull the back there for a second. But I got the big let out. Oh my goodness. She's been pushing for way too long. Hours, hours, hours. Nothing's been happening, but decided to go in there. Oh, she's got a small pelvis. But he's alive. He's alive. Hopefully the next ones go. And I had to pull the second one as well because, again, she was struggling. The third one, she was able to get out on her own after some serious pushing. Definitely took longer than it should have, but after that, yeah, no, she could not have the rest of her babies. At that point, she was completely exhausted. She was hardly pushing anymore. And so, yeah, I had to help her out for the rest too. And after that third piglet was born on its own, the fourth one was taking way too long to come. So I went ahead, put my hand up there again to see what's going on. And her uterus had actually kind of like twisted so um pigs have two uterine horns and they had flipped over each other and kind of like twisted like that so i could feel that there was a piglet in there but it wasn't actually coming through the birth canal like it should i could just feel it like through the tissue so i would bring my hand forward and i could feel it if i looped it around like that so that's when i started to get fairly worried what do i do here i don't know so I did a little bit of research, talked to people as quickly as I could, um, got some reassurance from my husband, and I was able to get her up, flip things around, realign everything up in there, and uh, get her laying on the opposite side. And then I was able to pull that piglet out, and from then on I had to pull the rest out as well. And I will show you guys some of that in the video. <laughs>
and yeah but yeah I was definitely worried I had thought about calling the vet it was at that point it was like three in the morning though so I knew I did not want to bother him unless I absolutely have to and for the vet to get here would have taken a good almost hour so yeah I tried to avoid that and I did end up avoiding that thank goodness but um I actually talked to our vet a couple of days ago um, after the fact that she had had her babies kind of explained to him all that had happened and he kind of assured me that I did everything right did everything the way that he would have done it and he said you know if I was there I probably would not have been able to get my hand in there so this is one time that I'm definitely thankful to be a woman farmer and have smaller arms and smaller hands because to hear that from a vet knowing that you know he might not have been able to help the situation and I was kind of the only one here that would have been able to do anything that was definitely uh, reassuring and validating to hear that I guess so after she had all her babies and we struggled all night long with that what a terrible terrible night I gave her a good shot of antibiotics just so that she doesn't get a uterine infection would not want that um, and it took her a little bit longer than it should have to get up again but when she did finally get up she had a drink she's eating right now we are about a week in to her babies so a week old now and she's doing great everything's pretty much back to normal she is eating drinking happy the baby boy piglets are castrated everyone's got their iron shots and doing great so i'm happy that i was able to save them but man what an ordeal <laughs> to talk about like what do I do now so it's been a struggle a really big struggle for me to figure out what I should do in this situation I know that a lot of other pig farmers if they had this much difficulty with a guilt or a sow having birth they definitely would have probably called her from the breeding program so pulled her out of the breeding program and I have been really on the fence about that because I know that it might be the right thing to do but I don't know there's a lot of factors at play here that maybe contributed to that situation so I'm just not comfortable making that decision yet and also another thing that's really weighing on my heart is just how nice of a pig she is she is so trusting she is so calm she doesn't growl at you you can go in the barn with her and you can pet her babies and her and she's just nice and calm she doesn't growl at you she doesn't try to get up and attack you or tell you to get out of there or worry about her babies as much I mean, she's still a sow, so I'm not 100% trusting of her with her babies, but as far as sows go, her temperament is pretty rare. So, I like that she's passing that on to her babies, and I like handling her. She's just so much easier to handle with a situation like ours, where we kind of do have to get up and close and personal with them sometimes. Yeah, I don't know what to do there and I have not made a decision yet. I uh, have a lot of things to think about and yeah, there's like I said a few factors that have probably con maybe contributed to the fact of why she had such a difficult birth. One maybe being that our boar was just too large for her and has thrown too large of piglets for her to handle. One being that she's also young, she's a gilt, she's never had babies before, she's only a year old, so she's still going to grow. The thing I wonder is, if she's going to grow more, is her pelvis going to grow as well? Like, is she going to have trouble again, though? 
and I would really hate to put her through that ordeal but I don't know I don't know what to do um I have a lot of things to think about and I'm gonna try and make the right decision so yeah but I wanted to give you guys an update of all that happened there because I think it's important to show the behind the scenes yeah uh, there's more to having baby piglets than just they're just born so I wanted to show you guys all that and I am happy that you guys tuned in for another video thanks again and thank you for your patience in my content creation I know it's not as consistent as it could be but um thank you guys again for watching take care I hope that you guys are all doing well I know for here um we keep getting these weird spring snowstorms so every time it starts to dry up we get a huge dump of snow overnight and really wet slushy junk and then it makes the yard a huge mud pit again so yeah i'm looking forward to when it dries up i know that the moisture is good for the crops and the hay and everything like that so there's pros and cons for sure but anyways i hope you guys take care and thanks again for tuning in